Hi, this is Maturish, and this is the channel where we dish the ish on Mature Tip. And if you're wondering why I'm sitting here looking like a bullet head, it's because I'm getting ready to actually lay a wig down. Now, that means I'm going to keep this wig on for a couple of days, at least. I generally don't go past like a weekend or whatever, but I have something I need to do this week, and I figured I might as well wear my new braided wig. What I prefer to use, actually, is a queen size knee high. That's what's on my head. Hmm. And I can get it in a in a close enough color that when I put powder in my part, yes. the impression of scalp, because your scalp is slightly lighter than you are, or your facial skin, whatever. Now you can see my hairline under here. And let me show you Miss Miss Wee Queen. She's gorgeous. It's actually not a braided wig. Cynical tools again. And she long, long. Okay. Now I love long braided wigs, not long regular hair but for braided wigs i've got a few that are very long and this one is very long but the detail is beautiful in this wig so without further ado i'm going to go ahead and show you how i'm going to lay her down in the cap construction and the lace is still on the wig that part is all corn road there's an elastic band in here as well as the adjustable piano keys in the back and she has one comb in the back and i think two two on each side of the braided the corn work part so there's enough in here to hold this wig down so i i'm doing the ball cap method so i can show y'all so y'all can never say she didn't do the ball cap method she can do it she just don't like doing it but i don't like wearing a wig for very long that i can't take back off and once you do all of this you ain't want to take off no wig okay so first of all what i do the first thing we're going to do is add bed head. And it's a holding spray. I like to use that rather than glue because, well, it's gentler. It's only hairspray and it holds fast. But you've got to get it all the way around your hairline like I'm doing here. And then you got to dry it. So I'm taking a blow dryer. And the reason I'm doing this voiceover is because I've messed this video up so many times. So if you see my lips moving and you don't hear anything coming out, it's because I don't pay any attention to it. Listen to me behind the curtain. So I'm doing my very first layer of bed head. And now I'm doing my second layer of bed head. You've got to have a good foundation to lay your wig. And you do not want your wig lifting in public. That is not cute. So we're going to spray the same place around the edge of my hairline. It doesn't matter if it gets in my hair, but a little bit down on my forehead. And particularly right there around the sides near my ears because the ear tabs are most likely to lift. And then we go back to the drying again. I am making faces and all kinds of things, but it doesn't hurt or anything. And I've got to get it good and dry. So now that I think that it's good and dry, and it kind of gets hard once it gets dry, I'm going to cut holes for my ears. Now, there are two schools of thought. You can put the cap on and immediately pull your ears through in the manner that I'm doing, or you can wait till later. For me, it doesn't matter. My hair doesn't grow down past the tops of my ears. Well, it does, but I cut it off for the hairstyle that I'm wearing in my own natural hair. So it's okay just to pull my ears through now. The biggest worry we have, again, is gonna be the side tab lifting, and I'm gonna show you how to fix that. What I'm doing now is tying off the leg of the knee high. You don't really need that. That's just something that's in the way. So I make a little knot and then I cut the leg off and toss it. That's the end of that. Now, the next step requires that I go in and cut off the excess on this cap. I'm going to do this slowly. I usually start in the middle and work my way around. I've got to get very close to my hairline. And I'm going to do this in multiple steps and you'll see me go in and stop, go in and stop. I'm going to cut around my ear because I know, because I've tried the wig on before I ever started this and everybody should do that. And I forgot to say that, but now you know, okay. 
I'm going to cut that lace off all around my hairline. I'm going to fix the ear tabs to fit the wig and my own hairline. Yours may not be the same. You may need the cap to come down in front of your ears some. I don't need that because I don't have hair there. And again, this is not the fastest part of this. What I'm doing here is just cutting off the back from where I cut the ear holes. You don't need that. You can just cut that off and let it hang. It doesn't matter. But I'm carefully cutting this off and each time I go in, I get just a little bit closer. Now, my hairline is fairly rounded. It just is. But I also know that my hairline around my ears stops towards the tops of my ears. So I'm not going to need cap over there. And I'm going to keep going around and cutting off as much lace that has rolled up as I can, except for right there at the ear tabs. Then I'm going to take another layer of bed head and spray around the perimeter of my face. Now I'm trying to lay this cap down, okay? I want to get it saturated all the way around, including the ear tabs part. And then I'm going to take my edges, tie down, and tie her up for a bit. I don't know why I'm making these faces again. This doesn't hurt. I'm just making faces because I'm making faces. Now, 15 minutes or so later, this has dried very hard. And you can see that the lace is no longer rolling up. And I'm going to start to put powder on top of the cap because the front of the wig is cornrowed. There are a lot of braids and openings there that you wouldn't have in a normal wig and so I've got to start putting some powder up there and I'm using a powder that I normally use to powder the parts of my wigs and it's a little bit lighter than I am it's not a powder that I wear every day I'm going to use an alcohol wipe to clean the powder off of my face and pretty soon I'm going to have a nice shiny ring around my face but I got to get all of that off of there and I've got to get it off pretty quickly I usually don't start a wig with a full face of makeup, but I was reviewing wigs and decided I'm not taking all this off just to lay a wig. So I had to get that off. And so I'm shining around the edge there and I'm adding more powder. I realized that I need to go a little bit farther back. Is my white hair going to be a mess when I take this wig off? Uh huh. It absolutely will. I'm also going to powder the lace part of this wig on the inside right now. I'm using the same powder that I used on the top of the cap. As you can see there, there's the, the uh, elastic band and I put that over my head. Now I'm going to pull the wig down into place. I've already decided where this wig's going to go before I ever started doing anything to it. But now I'm going to pull her forward, get her seated exactly where I want the hairline to fall. I've cut two slits to make the lace on the wig three parts. It just makes it easier. Now I got to get this hair out of my way. And so I pin it up in the back. And you can see those baby hairs, honey. You can make a whole bayang out of those, but we'll get to that later. Right now, I'm going to take some mousse and get them out of the way because I've got to work on the lace and I can't have all these long hairs hanging down in my face. And I haven't decided if I want to cut them off completely. So the mousse is just to lay those baby hairs or grown hairs or whatever you want to call them back into the wig. Then I'm going to lift up the lace and some people like to use glue. I have it. I don't like to use it. I'm going back in with the bed head. Now I'm spraying my forehead right in front of my hairline because that's where the lace is going to be placed. I want to make sure I get it all the way around and plenty of it. Then starting in the middle, I pull the wig forward and now I'm laying the wig down. You can see me pressing just a little bit, but now I'm going back in with the bed head on top of the lace and the hairline so that this wig stays solid, okay? I'm still pressing, I'm still pulling, and I want it to be seated 
just right because once you get it on, you can't move it, okay? Now I'm going to start cutting off the lace. I usually start with the middle piece because it's the easiest to see. And then I'm going to go over by my ear. This is where I have trouble with some braided wigs. I have one braid too much at the bottom. I am cutting off this braid as well as the lace as close to the edge of the wig as I can get it. It's just one braid. Nobody's going to ever miss it. And then I'll go and do the same thing on the other side. Take that braid off along with the lace around there and toss it. You just simply don't need it. And I do wear glasses, so I need to be able to have some space between the wig and the top of my ear. Now I'm just going around carefully, trying to make sure that I got all of the lace off. And I'm trying to brush these baby hairs out of my way. They keep kind of falling back down. But I'm still working on the lace on this wig. I'm just trimming off little pieces as I see it. I can get close to my mirror. I can look and make sure that there aren't any little lace tags hanging down that are not going to look attractive later. Because the object is to melt this lace into your face. Simply because you may not want to use your baby hairs and then I'm going in on top of the wig <laughs> and the hairline with the bed head. And it looks like I'm using a lot of bed head and should buy stock in this company. But I'm actually just using a very small amount. Now I'm using my rat tail comb, the back of it, to press this wig into my face all the way around the perimeter. I also use a little bit of bed head in the parting space the main parting space of this wig just to keep it on and then I get my edge tie tie it back up once again and I'm going to get it good and tight this time and look at the powder all over me I'm, I'm a mess so I went and changed my shirt and it took me about 20 minutes to do a few things around the house now I'm going to take the edge tie back off we are rounding the curve here and we are about to hit the home stretch. You can see a shiny place around my forehead simply because I had to use an alcohol wipe. You've got to keep your skin clean in order for the wig and the lace to stick to the bed head. Now, I'm admiring the wig and trying to show you that I've got a shiny place on my forehead. But look how long she is. This is a gorgeous 28-inch wig, honey. She is in a brown with rust towards the end. It's ombre. It's twists. This wig is everything. So I'm just pulling the wig down and taking a look at the edges. But see, not moving. Not moving at all. The wig construction is just beautiful, and this melt is looking pretty good. You can tell it's looking pretty good because there is no white ring around my head. Now, I'm combing these baby hairs back down because, or grown hairs, or whatever you want to call them. I'm combing them back down out of the wig. Remember, I had them kind of pasted out of my way so I could work on the lace. But now I'm combing them back down and trying to decide, am I going to use any of them or none of them. Look at that big old thick thing hanging at the top of my head. Now you can cut it and thin it out, but I'm still of the belief that if I'm having my hair braided in a salon, I'm not going to have a whole lot of baby hair. A lot of baby hair is used to hide the melt or any lace that's on your face. I try not to use that because I don't like the baby hair look. So I'm cutting those suckers off all of them except for little tendrils right by my ear now I'm going to brush those down on both sides and after I brush them down I have some Carol's daughter edge control and I'm gonna use a little bit of that it smells really good it's a vanilla bean something or other but I'm going to make just a little curly cue with the baby hairs that were hanging down on the side of my head. Just leave them hanging there. Nobody's going to see them. The wig, the way the wig falls, you don't get to see much of that. But hey, you got to do something. Okay? So I made a curly cue on both sides. Just wrapped it around my finger and that's good enough. I'm still looking at this lace. I'm still trying to make sure that it is laid in there. 
If you see little tiny tags of rolled up lace, you can certainly cut them off. And remember, you're not going to have to do this every time. Okay, now I am preparing to blend out this lace because there is a little bit of a cast around my face. Although bedhead dries clear, you still don't want a white cast. And besides that, I was missing makeup on my face. So I'm going in to blend my makeup back onto my face. And I'm admiring myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm doing the most as usual. And yes, I'm trying to see if make sure that it's snug and it fits very well because it didn't feel like it was going to move. But I had to make sure you can pull it down in the back if you need to. And I go back in and I'm watching myself and I'm now I decided to fix my whole face. Like I said, hashtag doing too much. But at any rate, I'm going to freshen up my lipstick because I had on a burgundy and I thought if I added kind of a brown gloss to it, it would tone it down just a little bit more and make it look better with the beat for this wig. And... Now I'm going to put in my Fashion Nova hoops. Yes, ma'am. These are gold hoops. I've had them for a year. They hold their color very well for costume jewelry. And all of my real jewelry is gold. So I kind of wanted those. Now I think I'm looking really cute. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I, I really think I'm cute. Okay, what else can I do over here? Now I'm going to take a little bit of my actual face powder, which is Bare Essentials uh, Mineral Powder. And I'm going to touch up any little places that I see. And I'm clued going into any parting spaces. I'm checking clothes for hairs here. I thought I had gotten all those little baby hairs off, but there's a couple sticking up and they look real crazy after they've been powdered because you can see them even more. After that, I'm going back in and I'm going to make sure that I got enough powder on my face <laughs> that it's going to take me an hour to get this makeup off later. But at any rate, I, you just keep working, keep working until you get all the hair all the tags of lace. I'm using my fingernails to roll any loose lace up so that I can cut it off. That's all there is to it. This wig is now laid for the gods. And what I'm going to do is admire myself. And I'm also going to explain what happened to those two braids I, I cut braid. off. I also wear glasses, although I'm wearing contacts right now. I do have to wear glasses and I have to be able to get the glasses over the tops of my ears. So I had to remove that one braid. Don't feel bad if you have to remove one or two braids, depending on how your ears sit on your little head. But is this not a lick okay this is a lick a look a bop it's anything you want it to be i'm trying to tell you oh and i did that in 30 minutes yeah and that's just taking into account drying time for my bedhead setting spray which dries clear no problem yeah so i hope you enjoyed this i hope you got a kick out of this um this is not something you'll see me do very often so if you need to see this, you better look at it. I'm not going to delete it. It'll be up for all time, but I won't be doing this again. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions about laying a wig or uh, because you lay a any wig, any lace front wig the way I did this one, this one just happened to be the braided wig that I have to lay. And you can also wear this glueless, which means you just put enough uh, adhesive right here to hold it. If you want it to stay longer than that, you also want to wear a protective cap at night and you want to take care of the hair by not getting it all wet in the front because then your lace go lift. So it, there are some care things that you need to do here to be careful. But, honey, honey, get down in the comments and tell me what you think of this particular braided wig because I love her. I love the color. I love everything about it. I honestly do. Um, I will put the name of the vendor that I purchased it from. This was a wig that took forever and a day to get to me. But honey, she is worth it. She is worth it. Okay. And remember, nobody can do you the way that you can do you. You're special just the way you are, especially to me. I love you just the way you are. And so until next time, when we get back into some hair and do some things, have a great day. Bye-bye.